What's going on guys? I hope everyone is staying safe. Today, let's talk about the Tilton Nano Focus. Reading and watching great reviews on the Tilton Nano Follow Focus system convinced me to buy it. Now let me be clear, this isn't a review, but rather some observations that I feel are kind of important. There are plenty of tutorials on YouTube to help you learn how to use the Tilton Nano Follow Focus, so I'm only going to focus on a few quirks and share with you how I solved these specific issues. Now the nano motor has a micro USB port for power. So you instantly assume using the correct USB cable will supply enough power for the motor, which we all know for USB is five volts. The power for the nano follow focus motor can be higher, actually pretty high, up to 18 volts. And you'll want this higher voltage if you have a lens with a stiff focus ring like the Sigma we're, we're filming with right now. In order to move a stiff focus ring, you'll want pro to provide that higher voltage. I use 12 volts since there really isn't much of a difference in newtons per meter when powering the motor from 12 volts on up to, let's say, 18. A USB style cable that supplies 12 volts isn't hard to make. It will take a few parts that you may need to order. I'll leave links in the description below. You'll need a USB type A female connector and uh, buy them with a small PCB already attached. This makes it much easier to ensure polarity since VCC and ground are clearly marked. You'll need some 16 gauge wire. I'm choosing to use a 2.1 millimeter barrel connector for the other end, but you can certainly choose a DCAT connector if you're using a V-mount style battery. Solder the bare wires to the corresponding VCC and ground and the P, uh, on the PCB using red and black as positive and ground. Do not use the connections in the center as we're only using this cable for power and not a true USB data cable. Solder the opposite end with the connector of your choice. Now you have a cable that will carry 12 volts or 18 volts to the nano focus motor. The voltage is displayed on the OLED of the nano motor. Let me stress, don't go past 18 volts. Now the nano focus motor will provide enough torque to move that stiff focus ring. Setting AD focus points for a re repeatable rack focus is a breeze on the Tilta nano focus system, but it has a quirk. With a more conventional approach, the focus wheel only needs to travel that specific short rotation to go from the A mark to the B mark. However, the Tilta Nano Focus wheel takes a different approach. When clicking the AB points on the wheel, the short AB focus change is mapped over the entire circumference of the wheel. Now, this may not sound like a big deal, but on set, we discovered this to be a problem. The focus puller must reset their hand position to complete the full rotation of the wheel, resulting in a pause in the focus pull. There didn't seem to be a way around this on the nano focus system itself. Shorter focus pulls may be a feature only available on Tilta's more expensive Nucleus M or Nucleus 2 system. After all, we're talking a big difference in price. I had to come up with a practical solution, so once again, 3D printing came to the rescue. Designing a secondary wheel that would allow a complete rotation without having to remove your hand was the idea. Here's my solution. This hand crank slips over the existing design of the Nano Focus wheel. Your hand never leaves the knob, allowing for a continuous motion over the entire circumference of the focus pole. AB focus pulls still take a little getting used to since the travel is so far, but now it's much easier with the focus assist wheel I designed. 
The manual falls short on how to set up the nanofocus of, uh, for a more, DS, uh, more modern DSLR style lens. More to the point, lenses that do not have hard stops. The Tilta's website instructs you to artificially create the hard stops by gently stopping the lens rotation with your hands. I can't stress enough, if you're not careful, this could damage your follow focus motor. Even though Tilta says it won't, <laughs> don't try it. I ran across a video not too long ago by Sean Ko that explains a similar process, but it didn't quite work the way he explained it. You'll find a link to his full review and tutorial below. His video did get the gears rolling in my head and the light bulb turned on, so I told myself just use the same AB methodology with just a slight change. Make sure not to engage the focus motor. Move the lens focus ring to the minimum focus distance. Now rotate the focus wheel until the OLED displays 999 or 0, whichever you feel comfortable with. I prefer 0, since to me 0 represents minimum focus distance and 999 represents infinity. Now engage the motor onto the focus gear. Do not use the calibrate function, but rather just hit the set button to set the A point. Turn the nano focus wheel when the focus window reads infinity. Hit the set button again to set the B point. Now you have a calibrated DSLR lens. You'll need to repeat this process for every lens change. The last quirk, and this is a small one, is the battery for the focus wheel. Please first remember this is not a AA battery. Make sure your team knows it's not a AA battery. Tilta provides two, which is nice, but the charger is this weird magnetic cord that plugs into a 5 volt USB style charger. This wasn't, this wasn't quite ideal for me, so I ordered an entire charging kit that includes four batteries. Oh, and remember, the battery goes in positive side up. I'm afraid of the day when the battery goes in the wrong way. I'm not sure if the focus wheel has polarity protection. Polarity isn't indicated on the battery door. And one last tip, when storing the Tilta Nano Focus system, remove the battery from the wheel. It will discharge. Share your Nano Focus experience in the comments below. And remember to watch Sean Coe's video. It's got lots of good information on the Tilta Nano Focus system. I hope this information was helpful. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching.